So you've learned a lot about limits, but what are they good for? Well, limits are something that are uh, used as like the building blocks of everything in calculus. And calculus is divided into two main branches. We have differential calculus, and the big idea there is finding the slope of the tangent line to a curve. And then we also have integral calculus, and the big idea there is finding the area under the curve. And limits will help us to uh, uncover how to approach both of these big ideas. So in differential calculus, what kinds of things uh, do you learn? So we're going to look at instantaneous velocity and acceleration. We're going to look at rates of reactions. Maybe uh, and if you've ever taken chemistry, you know about kinetics and how to analyze rates of reactions. Well, we can do that with differential calculus. If we want to maximize profit, this would be maybe an economics question, that's something differential calculus can help us with. And we can also minimize the costs of production. In fact, any kind of maximization or minimization problem is something that differential calculus can handle. And we can also look at growth rates of bacteria. Uh, or if we have a population of anything and we want to look at the growth rate, that's something that differential calculus can help us with. And differential calculus is typically something that you do first. And then after differential calculus, you look at integral calculus. So we can look at the distance traveled, and that would be maybe something in physics. We can look at the volumes of irregular shapes. So you probably know how to find the volume of a sphere or a cube, but we can look at some shapes that are not so easy to figure out. We can look at the work done by a variable force. This is another physics type problem. We can look at consumer and producer surplus, another economics type problem. And also probability. There are a lot of applications uh, to uh, integral calculus to probability. That's something that we can look at. So we have differential calculus, we have integral calculus, and it turns out that these two things are related by something called the fundamental theorem of calculus. And in fact, there's several fundamental theorems, but we'll see uh, a, a very interesting relationship between differential calculus and integral calculus.